I believe in the non-binary God, whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads, and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love. So, beloved, let us love. A question to you, Vocab Malone. Is this the true God? Is this the true God of the Bible? All praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. As always, double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim that are prophets and teachers who are hazarding your lives daily to push the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel. And to the rest of you believers, you Akim, you Fiyakwati, me and children, Shalom, peace and love be unto you as well. According to Vocab Malone, the God that High Priest Abba Bivens believes in is not the true God. According to Vocab Malone, the God that King Masha believes in is not the true God. According to Vocab Malone, the God that High Priest Ariah believes in is not the true God. According to Vocab Malone, the God that our beloved Apostle Tahar believes in is not the true God. So is this the true God, the non-binary God or that this woman is speaking about within this particular video? All right, which when you learn about the God of Christianity, to be truthful and honest, there's no difference between the God of Christianity, all right, modern day Christianity, all right, which is, which is, um, you know, a, a joke. There's no difference between that particular God and Satan. All right, because they both allow, do as you will, do what you want. All right, and you accept it. All right, even if you're Mo, which the God of the Bible, all right, whose true name is Yahweh, is completely against. All right, as you heard within this video, I was just a woman that's a priest. And that right there in itself is off. That's off because a woman isn't supposed to be a priest or a priestess and is not supposed to have any art authority uh, within the church at all. Uh, as it states within the scriptures, when you go into 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter in the 34th church, a uh, 34th verse, it says, let your women keep silence in the church. All right, as thus saith the law, as thus saith the precepts and the commandments of the Heavenly Father. All right, who is the first to be deceived? All right, who are the ones that are um, the weaker vessels who are easier to deceive? It's the woman. And they're the ones that are more acceptant and more lenient, all right, towards accepting things that are off and wicked. All right, more than a man is. The scripture says that they're the weaker vessel. So as you heard within the video, this particular priestess, all right, is, is reading, you know, a script within the church. And you can see that they have changed things around. All right, first of all, they called the Heavenly Father a non-binary God. Come on now. All right, and non-binary is defined as, all right, uh, uh, describing people who feel their gender cannot be defined within the margins of gender binary. All right, instead, they understand their gender in the way that goes beyond simply identifying as either a man or a woman. So they identify as something plural. All right, so she said the, the pronouns of the Heavenly Father is plural. You know, and that, you know, they basically identify as they, their, them. 
and that's not the truth. All right, even when you go into the scripture, the book of um, Zechariah, the 14th chapter, in the ninth verse, it says, And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Yahweh in his name one. I read it in the NLT as well. And Yahweh will be king over all the earth. On that day, there will be one Lord whose, whose name is Yahweh, and his name alone will be worship so when you go into the word one okay let's go into the word one which is h259 the word there is a and then it's one number one just one singular all right so what the fuck are you talking about talking about you know the non-binary god you know whose pronouns are plural all throughout the scriptures you know the heavenly father identify you know himself as a man not as a regular man that walks upon the planet earth but his gender is a man all right the book of exodus 15 and 3 yahweh is a man of war yahweh is his name the book of daniel 7 and 9 I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as the burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands. Uh, see, look, even even that horn chimed in on that. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. So those are the pronouns of the heavenly Father. His, you know, him, he, and he identifies as a man. All right, the judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And who is that great horn? That great horn represents America. You know, because it started off as a little horn, you know, 13 colonies, but it eventually grew into the United States of America, you know, which the spiritual name of the United States of America or the figurative name will be Babylon the Great, you know, or the whore. And they have blasphemed the heavenly father and his son all right and and, and and you know said things concerning the heavenly father and the son which are not true which is slanderous all right which is slanderous to the reputation you know to the name to the status of the heavenly father it says i beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake and I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Because eventually, what will be the penalty that comes upon the great whore? You know, Babylon, great Babylon, you know, America. It's going to be judgment by fire, you know, for all of the wickedness that this place have promoted. All of the abomination that this place have promoted. All right, the Heavenly Father is going to make her end by way of fire now reading this from the nlt this is second peters 2 and 6 it says later yahweh condemned the cities of sodom and gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes he made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people because the same judgment of sodom and gomorrah is going to happen in the future all right, to this place because of their ungodliness. And what is an example? An example is something all right, that is set for, for imitation. So because Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, in their wickedness, the cry of it, you know, went up into the heavenly father because of all of the abominations that they were doing and promoting in that place, he brought fire upon it. So he's gonna do the same thing to this place. And as Paul Mooney said, if the Heavenly Father does not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, 
I mean, destroy America, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an, an apology. It says, but Yahweh will also rescue Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immor uh, immorality of the wicked people around him. And let's define immorality. The state or quality of being immoral, wickedness. So we're going to hit immoral. It says not conforming to accepted standards of morality. And you will see that they're always trying to change the Bible. They tried to change the Heavenly Father. They tried to change the Son. They tried to change the nature of the angels. They changed, you know, the way that they look. You know, they change their characteristics. They change what they stand for. They change uh, um, what the precepts say within the scriptures. All because of what? They don't want to conform, you know, to the accepted standard of morality according to the scriptures. So that's the reason why they have to engineer a artificial intelligence to rewrite the Bible. That's the reason why... You know, they, they rewrite and change what the precepts say. All right, which when you change the precepts of the Bible, the scripture says that um, once you alter the word, you know, by adding or taking away from it, then basically you're cursed. The book of, um, I believe that's Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And the second verse. Yep. And I'll read it in the NLT. Do not add to or subtract from these command commands. I give I am giving you. Just obey the commands of Yahweh, your power that I am giving you. And that's simply to put it. And that is what does the definition say? This is you know, the accepted standard of morality, the law, such as the commandments of the Heavenly Father, his precepts. So what do they do? All right. Being wicked, they change the precepts of the Heavenly Father. All right. Another scripture is the book of Revelation, the 22nd chapter in the 18th verse. Which says, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So what did they do? They added. And this is the reason why the great judgment of this place is going to be so monumentous. So going back, it says, but Yahweh also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. And this is how we are. We're tormented in our soul to have to see and hear these things and have to hear the things that they say slanderously against Yahweh, against Yahweh Shai. You know, uh, uh, the scriptures being broken down wrong, the laws and commandments not being the law of the land. You know, these things are, 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 are agitating, you know, they're frustrating. But yet we still have to endure it because these things have to happen. All right. It, uh, eventually, so that the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh can happen upon this place so that the Heavenly Father can judge this place greatly. So you see. Yahweh knows how to rescue the godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment, in which the final judgment is what? You know, as it states within the book of uh, Malachi, the fourth chapter, verse one, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yet all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said Yahweh of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You know, the scripture speaks about the second death. 
All right, the first death was by flood. The second death is going to be by fire, similar to that of Sodom and Gomorrah. So reading on, it says, He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire and who despise authority. These are people... Uh, these people are proud and arrogant, daring even to scoff at supernatural beings without so much uh, uh, as trembling. Which they, they get so deep into following their own sexual twisted, you know, desires and perversions, you know, and they even go as far as to, you know, apply that particular nature and behavior to the deities that they worship. All right, because clearly the deity that this woman is promoting all right, is not, you know, the true God and is not the God of the Bible. All right. And is not, you know, uh, uh, the Messiah. You know, when you go into the book of Flavius Josephus, you know, the book of Josephus, you go to the, the part where it says against Apion. And you go to book two, you know, um, I believe that's. Uh, 28 paragraph 275 and it says this concerning you know the Greeks and their nastiness all right because we're living under the new Roman Empire which all of their ways they adopted from the Greeks it's, it says nay such things are inserted into the body of their loss and ha uh, and had once such a power among the Greeks that they ascribed these sodomitical practices to the gods themselves as part of their character and indeed it was according to the same matter that gods married their own sisters this the greeks contrived as an apology for their own absurd and unnatural pleasures so the same thing is going on here all right they're attributing you know, they're, they're or ascribing their own side of medical practices, all right, unto uh, uh, particular deities so that they can feel more comfortable, all right, in their sexual immorality. All right, she even said within, all right, uh, uh, that video, you know, that Jesus Christ is their son, all right, who had two dads. In which, when Yahweh Shai, although the scriptures identify him as the son of the Heavenly Father, and that's because he's the first begotten. He's the only spirit created of the Heavenly Father. And then Yahweh Shai created everything else. So he's the son of the Heavenly Father, but yet he came in the flesh. Our right, scripture says that he took not on the nature of angels, but he took on the nature of his brethren, you know, or his kindred of Abraham. The book of Hebrews all right, 2 and 16, it says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a faithful uh, 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 high priest in things pertaining to Yahweh and to make reconciliation um, for the sins of the people. You know, in which the scriptures also say that Yahweh Shai was born of a mother. So how would you explain that? Because men are, are not able to biologically are, uh, uh, conceive. All right, they're not able to, you know, pass down a, 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 a child through their matrix. All right, so the word of the Heavenly Father is under attack. All right, it tells you right here in the book of Galatians 4. In verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Because under the law, you have, uh, um, you know, um, first of all, when a man and a woman comes together, all right, you have something called the seed of um, copulation. All right, because that seed has to go from that man into the woman. He has to pop that woman and put his seed inside of her. 
And then afterward, that woman, according to the law, has to wait a, a, a six week period before they can even come back together. All right. To, to deal because she's going through a stage of, of uh, uncleanliness. All right. She's in the state of impurity. So she has to wait and then eventually she will be clean. And then if I'm not mistaken, she will have to offer an offering. All right. I have to go back over that. But that shows you that, you know, um, Yahweh Shai had a father and he had a mother. But a simpler scripture to go to would be the book of Luke 2 and 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. So Yahweh Shai had a father. And he had a mother The scripture says that he was of the seed of David According to the flesh When you go into the word seed Within the Greek the word there is a, a Semen Or sperma And the word sperma means semen Now Going to the book of uh, Revelation 13 and 6 It says And he opened his mouth in blasphemy Against the most high to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and what did that scripture say <laughs> all right they're not uh uh ashamed to to uh even speak evil or scoff at supernatural beings so they talk particular things against the heavenly father against his son against the angels and even this unnatural immorality all right, and their evil, wicked, sexual, sodomitical practices, they even ascribe that unto the Heavenly Father, you know, his son and the angels. All right, just like they did with those Greek gods and goddesses. So ultimately, they blaspheme the Heavenly Father. When you go into the word blaspheme, the word there is slander. And it says the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. So you're trying to damage the reputation of the Heavenly Father by making it seem as if he's a sodomite. By making it seem as if his son's a sodomite. By making it seem as if the angels are sodomites. And you have changed the word of the Heavenly Father. All right. And you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. So therefore, a great grave judgment is coming and is going to come upon this place because it's through America, the great whore. That this abomination is being pushed Alright this is a part of that cup Of the wine of the wrath of her fornication Alright it says um, In the definition To make a false or damaging statement About someone Alright from the online etymology Slander Late four, uh, 13th century Slandry uh, State of impaired reputation Alright because you're trying to Impair the reputation Alright of the heavenly father all right, disgrace or dishonor, century 1300, a false tale or report spread maliciously, the fabrication and dissemination of false tales to discredit someone from Anglo-French, or right, esclandre, old French esclandre, all right, scandalous statements, alteration with interloping, century dictionary, of a scandal, a scandry, scandal, all right, from scandalum, cause of offense, stumbling block, temptation, scandal, all right, because you're also causing a stumbling block. So you're leading individuals to believe this, which isn't true. It's not true at all. All right, and because of this, all right, you're going to be judged. All right, the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter. In verse 2, it says, And with, with the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So within that wine, all right, they don't keep the laws and the commandments of the Heavenly Father. They have altered all right, uh, um, the monetary system and brought forth a, fo a false monetary system of wicked and unjust balance. All right, they they um, uh, promote 
the alphabet lifestyle. All right, all of those things and more are within the wine of her fornication. And because of that particular wine that you're promoting, because of that wickedness that you're doing, eventually you're going to be destroyed. All right, the scripture speaks about the destruction of great Babylon. And there's no other nation in the world that's pushing this wickedness in the earth like this place. All right, there's no other place. So the Heavenly Father has to destroy this place. He has to. All right. And he's going to clean up his name and magnify his name. All right. When you read the scriptures, the characteristics that they're promoting or the woman is promoting within this video. All right. It's not the characteristics of the God of the Bible. All right. Which clearly shows you that that's not the true God. The true God is against immorality. He's against wickedness. All right, and his name is Yahweh, and his name, the name of his son is Yahweh Shai. All right, and they're going to pay for this. So we worship the true God, whose name is Yahweh, and the name of his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, is Yahweh Shai. Shalom.